This episode has been sponsored by Clip Studio Paint. I've been trying to find a software for my upcoming creator-owned comic book, Neo Wonderland, where I can basically color, letter, and put the whole entire book together in one single software. And not to mention, I wanted to use digital screen tones as well. And that's why I decided to use Clip Studio Paint for this book. So Clip Studio is a digital drawing, painting, comic book and manga, as well as animation app. Okay, so let's open the file and extract the lines. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna change the expression to gray. And then I'm going to extract the background. Look at how easy that is. <laughs> I like my line art to look like I did it by hand. So I just basically cleaned up as much as I can and to change the threshold, it was already done pre-scan. So it looks kind of like the contrast that I want. Let's create the background layer in shortcut G. G again for the paint bucket tool. Let's make that white. Okay. okay, so for this step, I'm gonna do uh, screen tones. So my favorite tool of all time is the lasso fill tool, but we're not gonna use that. We're just gonna use the regular lasso tool um, to add the screen tones. So let's go with this area right here. and see this uh, menu pops up and then you could just add screen tones like that. It's super simple. You could pick your density, the frequency, if you want a circle and all these other default shapes like um, asterisks and noise, that looks really cool too. So I'm just gonna go with the circle for the angle. How cool is that? Okay, so I'm just gonna hit okay. That's what I'm going to do. And if you see right here, there's the layer where the screen tone is, is a mask. So you could technically, this layer could technically just be um, the screen tone layer. So let's just say I go with a pen. So there you go. See, like you could just take the pen tool and then paint that in if you don't want to use the lasso tool. And then you could even do the uh, lasso fill. So I could just do this. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, fill this in. Let's turn the opacity up. So now you could just use this. So that's how you do it. I'm gonna go ahead and um, just fill all this in. Be very thoughtful about it. There you go. So that's what I'm thinking. But I'm probably gonna go in and do the background first so that I have the characters pop out more. So um, I'm probably gonna redo this right now. I think that if this was just going to be um, monochromatic and not colored, I would probably, you know, spend the time to lasso out the character so I'm just, or masking them off so that I'm just, you know, working with the background. But since I'm also going to be coloring this, I'm going to need to uh, speed up this process just a tad bit. And, you know, I can also erase where I want to and that's kind of cool. You guys have seen my other tutorials where I'm uh, using the X-Acto knife to cut out the screen tones. It's nice to not have to do that sometimes. It's definitely cost efficient too. Which brings me to why I decided to use Clip Studio Paint for this book was because I didn't want to have to switch between um, Photoshop and Illustrator just to do the lettering and the coloring and then, you know, getting the pages ready with um, Clip Studio Paint EX, I'm able to export multiple pages at once. It has a robust tool and subtool for um, lettering and word balloons. And most importantly, the screen tones subtool and tool aspect of this, it was just geared towards what I was trying to do, which was all these things all in one program. So now we get to go in here and start adding the light and shadow and stuff like that. And I can make it pretty neutral. I'm probably gonna use um, the multiply layer just to just a basic uh, shadow and light and then go in there and change it later. New layer and then let's go with multiply. I'm going to use a uh, 
pen for this one because I want it to be pretty sharp. I'm taking on about 90% of the tasks for my book right now, so the fact that this program is streamlined just for comic books and manga has made my workflow a lot easier and very enjoyable. You know what's nice about this uh, lasso fill tool is if you go like this, you get these really cool sharp lines like this. So it saves me from having to go back and forth. Oh yeah. I use shortcut keys a lot and in fact um, I got so used to the Photoshop shortcut keys that it took a little getting used to the, some of the shortcut keys on this program however you could actually change the shortcut keys um, to fit your needs and you know maybe change them to the ones that you're used to in Photoshop so that's a very cool feature to have and it's very easy to do okay so this is gonna be where I do the blending See the speck on his face was a little too, too hot, too bright. So this kind of softens it. And I go in and anywhere I see a highlight, let me see where it's at. Um, let me just blend it in just a little bit so it's not so harsh. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the rest of the piece. And then we're gonna move on to the, um, add glow tool which is really fun it makes everything pop this is gonna be the fun part I know I keep saying that so I'm gonna add a new layer on top of my uh, lines I'm gonna call it add glow and this is where I go in and just go crazy with the uh, add glow layer. so right here airbrush tool soft brush I mean and uh, you'd be surprised at how important the add glow layer filter is to this project it's cyberpunk so everything is neon it's lit very brightly and um, it's it's super important to this project as opposed to all the other projects I've worked on in the past so here we go we're gonna start lettering this page now um, so I am going to start. Right now it says that the balloon is not white and I have to make sure I change that. And then we have the stroke right here. Brush size. Let's make it one balloon. And I'm just going to begin by placing the balloons where I think the words are going to be or the dialogue. And now we're going to add a tail so and I'm gonna start writing both the pro version and the EX version have these extensive uh, lettering features that you see here um, I mainly got EX just for the ability to export print and work with multi-page files because I need to streamline my work and um, you know get things done as quickly as possible so being able to work with multiple files I think was like a game changer for me so the pro version would be sufficient for someone just starting out. Okay, so that's, you know, you see how it's bigger than the balloon. I just go to the object tool and then click on the balloon and make it bigger so that it fits in the lettering, fits inside of it perfectly. You could actually change the uh, frequency of the dots or the screen tones if you're not happy with it. The screen tone layer I have here is the character tones and then the layer property. I am going to turn the density down and then the frequency even less. Hopefully it will show up more, but we'll see when we print it out. Okay, so another thing with the screen tones is, so I created the shadow layer or part of the, just wanted to add some contrast, you know, so I just basically went in here with a, um, pen tool and just started doing the streaks but I actually wanted to create more screen tones here so what you could do is go to your effect on the layer property and you can basically convert it into a screen tone and of course as always you could change the frequency and 
I want it to be very noticeable. And there you go. You have more screen tones. So I have the EX uh, version of the software. You can actually try it out for three months and if you like it, you could get the Pro license or the EX license on the Windows and uh, Mac OS. And there is also a 12 month license for other devices. To find out more, please check out clipstudio.net. And as always, you guys, thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me and I hope to see you guys around.